Coming up, we are going to show you how to swap over your front and rear brakes on Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. So for example, you might have bought a second-hand bike or a new one that's just come uh, with the brakes the wrong way around for you personally. Now I've got some good news and that is that if you've got these junctions on the outer cables just here, then it's an actually an easier and a quicker job than on standard rim brake cabled bikes. If you don't have these and the cable simply runs all the way from the brake lever down to the caliper itself, it is a much lengthier lengthier and more in-depth job and something for another video. Right, let's go through the tools that you're going to need for the job. Uh, it might be that you don't need too many at all. You're going to need a couple of open-ended spanners or wrenches. Uh, in this particular bike, it's two eight millimeter sizes that you're going to need. Uh, that might differ slightly for your own personal bike. You're gonna to have to see in a few moments time. I'm also going to need to be able to take the front wheel out uh, and I'm going to need a six millimeter Allen key for that. And also, a travel spacer like this for the disc brake pads. If things don't go to plan, and I'll explain that a little bit later on in the video, uh, there could be some more tools that you need. Firstly, a very small flat headed screwdriver, a two and a half millimeter Allen key, a bleeding block, plastic block, which looks like this, some disc brake hydraulic mineral oil, the hydraulic funnel, which you put in the top, possibly a magnet, some rag and some alcohol-based cleaning fluid. I'm having to borrow some from GMBN. And finally, an old piece of rag, a bit like this. Before we get on with the job proper, I'm going to remove the front wheel, which is what I need uh, my six millimeter Allen key for. Uh, that's just in case any of the hydraulic brake fluid drips out. We don't want to get it onto the disc rotor itself. So remove that, put it to one side. Now, during the process, uh, you don't want to be pulling on the brake levers at all. If you think that might accidentally happen, something like this travel spacer will be a good idea, is to slip up inside the caliper. Uh, that will mean if you do accidentally pull on the brake levers, uh, it won't push the pistons out, which is something that requires another job to get them back out again. Uh, then drape an old rag over. This is to stop any drips going onto the caliper itself. You can either drape it over, or as I'm doing, tying it on. Next up, we are going to slide the rubber covers to reveal the fixing underneath. Do it on both of the front and the rear brakes, like so. Then get your two spanners. As I said, on this particular bike, it's two eight millimeter open end spanners. And then we're going to undo very slightly one of the hoses and that's it just a quarter of a turn as you see there's a bit of a jolt when i did that and uh, what happens if you remove it completely and you do that on the other side with another jolt uh, that can lead to losing some of the internal mineral oil so do the same on the other side once you've given them both an initial loosen you can undo one of them the whole way and pull the cable out of one and then the other you can leave them dangling. And a very important reminder now, do not pull your brake levers on at this point. Then it's simply a matter of swapping the lines over. So we now want the front brake to be operated by the left lever. Do the same for the rear. Then it's just a reversal of the process. Uh, make sure you don't cross thread this screw as it goes back in. Just do them by hand to start with. Once you've got them tight, before you put those rubber covers back over, just give it all a quick clean with some rag and that alcohol-based cleaner because there has been a very small amount of fluid got out, not enough to affect the braking or the system. Just make sure it's all clean. Then slide these rubber covers back on. And once you've done that, the job is probably done if you've been pretty careful about this and not lost uh, much fluid. So take the rag off from around the caliper, take the travel spacer out if you've used one, replace the front wheel, and it's time to see if they feel all right. And the answer is, Front brake is now on the left and working very smoothly. Uh, rear brake, not so smooth. Uh, I'd love to say that I did that deliberately for the purposes of the next part of this video, but I didn't, I've just got it wrong. And nevertheless, we'll go through the next steps, which should hopefully solve this problem. 
Okay, so for the next step, you want to reveal what is under the rubber hoods here at the top. Uh, now these will differ ever so slightly, but for this particular Shimano model, we're going to need our very small, fine, flat-headed screwdriver to remove this cover. So I'm going to take it out with this magnet, because uh, I don't want to lose that, so just put it very carefully to one side. I'm going to leave it on the magnet there. Uh, then with that screw out, you can remove this plastic cover, which will reveal this two and a half millimeter screw that we want to take out in a few moments time. Uh, before we get around to that though, we want to take out the rear wheel because that is the brake uh, with the problem. Now at this point, we are going to take the brake pads themselves out. Uh, that's when you're gonna need your flathead screwdriver again. But firstly, you need to take this very small pin out. Then use your flat headed screwdriver to undo this screw down here. And then removing that will mean that you can remove the pads themselves. Just push them down, hold them at the other end. There they are, put them carefully to one side. Uh, now is the point at which you want to insert your bleed block. Uh, now you could get a specific Shimano one, uh, we couldn't find out, so we're using this uh, as a replacement. Basically the idea is that it's a piece of plastic that prevents the pistons from coming out when you pull on the brake lever at the front. So we can now undo this bolt with our two and a half mil Allen key. Again, it's a small one, so just be careful. And then you can get your bleeding funnel. Screw that in replacement of the screw itself. Now it should be firm, but don't go overboard. This is only plastic. Then take the mineral oil and just put a small amount in the top. Don't need too much. Then remove the plug. Now to encourage the bubbles uh, in the system and the air to come up, uh, you can give a few pulls of the brake lever. Oh, I've got some bubbles there, look already. Uh, if that doesn't work, give the cables some taps, that will encourage the air up as well. Now this is an internally cabled bike, uh, which means we can't of course access and tap it all, but we can start down near the rear caliper and do the stuff up here as well. And another good idea, uh, we're putting the bike on the stand for demonstration purposes, but of course the air tends to travel upwards, so raising the front of the bike so that the reservoir is close to the highest point is also a good idea. Well, we've had quite a few bubbles actually, so hopefully that will resolve our issues. Once you're happy that you've got all the air out of the system, replace the plunger in the top, unscrew the funnel, and because we haven't actually used that fluid in the system, uh, it's perfectly fine to just tip it back into its container. I'm just gonna give that a quick wipe with a rag. Right, then get your two and a half millimeter bolt and the appropriate Allen key, then replace the bolt, making sure that you haven't lost that rubber O-ring. Then you can replace the plastic cover, which goes over the top, and take that very small screw, uh, which is attached to my magnet, put that back in, and then screw that up tight too. That feels a lot better. Uh, if you've had the same problem on both sides, of course, you just repeat all those steps, uh, but for the front wheel instead of the rear, and then you should be all sorted. And as I said, uh, if you'd done things, or if I'd done things much more carefully to begin with, I probably wouldn't have needed to do all of those last steps. Well, I hope that's helped you if you've had this problem where you need to swap the brake levers over. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to GCN, there are loads of maintenance videos and loads of other videos too. You can do so by clicking on the globe. Now, we've got a few maintenance mistakes which you shouldn't make and you can find them by clicking just down here. Or if you'd like to know how to bleed disc brakes on road bikes, you can click down here.